37 to 10, the final score in Texas's season opener against Rice at home. Certainly not the best game that we have seen the Longhorns play, but nonetheless a victory in week one. Welcome to the Horns 24-7 instant reaction here after the opener against Rice. Tommy Yarsh alongside Eric Henry, who's joining us from DKR Memorial Stadium. Eric, your biggest takeaway in the Longhorns season opener. I'm going to give you two, Tommy. I'm going to start on the offensive side of the ball. The resiliency of Quinn Ewers. We've heard head coach Steve Sarkeesian talk about it all fall. The fact that maybe sometimes during last season, Quinn would go through a stretch and get down on himself. And Quinn's talked about the fact of not, you know, coupling a one bad drive into a second bad drive and a third bad drive. Well, we all saw that the offense was a little bit sluggish to open the game. There were some missed deep shots that Quinn talked about, Steve Sarkeesian talked about as well. There were a couple fourth down conversions that, quite frankly, they got stopped. You know, they were out physical by Rice to in certain elements, at least in the first half of the game. But the fact that they didn't let that compound it until, you know, an even larger issue in the second half, they came out. I don't say it looked like a completely different football team, but as far as the offense was concerned, they had better success in the offensive line. DJ Campbell, especially, looked bet much better in the second uh, in the second half before him getting banged up a little bit and just finding able to find some rhythm. I was really impressed with you know with DJ Baxter in the first half. He goes down, they find some rhythm from Jonathan Brooks and Jaden Blue. So just the resiliency of the offense, resiliency of the team, again, not letting you know the, the sluggish first half against you know quite frankly an inferior opponent and Rice uh, compound itself into something else, and then defensively. My biggest takeaway as far as on a positive side of things, just that run defense. You know, I don't care who you're playing against. When an, If you're at a point in the game, Tommy, in which you have 15 rushing attempts or eight yards, that is good. That's not counting the sack yards, right? So uh, that, to me, was just really stand out. I spoke with Jalen Ford post game. He talked about the fact that those, you know, getting those third down stops, getting those fourth down stops, while they might not be a turnover in the traditional sense, that's the way the team internally views it is that's a takeaway. That's a turnover. To be able to stop them, force a turnover on downs, really fires up the team, fires up the defense. And they said Jalen Ford said that they really take pride in that. So those are the two biggest takeaways. But definitely, as Steve Sarkeesian said, a lot of things to clean up before next week. And we all know what next week is, heading to Brian Denny Stadium and facing Alabama. You mentioned that run game. Texas' defense forcing Rice to go 4 of 13 on third down, just 27 yards on 25 rushing attempts for the Owls tonight. But you mentioned that offensive line really did struggle in that first half, came back a little bit stronger to start the second half. Three straight scoring drives from Quinn Ewers in that first team offense before Malik Murphy entered the game. So a little bit better of a showing there in the second half. And like you mentioned, a big game, a big game, a much tougher game coming up next week for Texas in Tuscaloosa against Alabama. Obviously, I think the offensive line here, Eric, to start us off when it comes to biggest areas of concern and stuff that does need to be cleaned up, I think takes precedence. You t- you've talked a lot in the offseason about the power run game. You mentioned those two fourth and shorts that could be converted in the first half. I think that's where you need to start when it comes to the agenda for practice this week against when you game plan for Alabama. You need to be better up front. Kyle Flood's group has to be better, simply put. Yeah, Tommy, you broke up there for a little bit. It's probably because of the fact that, hey, you know, now the game's over. It's just us writers here. You know, all the Wi-Fi, they've disconnected everything. So you broke up <laughs> a little bit, but I caught the gist of your question, talking about the fact that the offensive line does need to be better. Yes, I touched on it. In the fall, the power run game, that was a question that I didn't get a chance to ask head coach Steve Sarkeesian, but I did ask Quinn Ewers. Uh, Coach Sarkeesian talked about the fact that the first fourth down call in the first quarter was a bit of a botched play call, so he took responsibility for that. But uh, the one we saw Jonathan Brooks stopped on fourth and short, you know, where it was a fourth and one, and they, they probably got half a yard. Quinn said that this, quite frankly, need to execute better. So that is a big thing. In my mind, Tommy, it is the critical thing. Steve Sarkeesian was really proud, and he opened his press conference talking about winning in a variety of ways. He said that a lot gets made about the offense, right? But finding a way to win defensively is a way to win as well. And while I do agree with him, in terms of his offense, you got to have, in my mind, you have to have a power run game go go into Alabama. It doesn't necessarily mean that power is saying, you know, you got to have like a big physical back, right? I'm just saying when everyone in the stadium knows that you are going to run, Football Outsiders considers that statistic, third and two or less, or fourth and two or less. If you're going to have those scenarios, which Steve Sarkeesian said, he believes in his club, so he will go for it on fourth down, maybe more often than most, you got to convert. And again, the entire season doesn't revolve around Alabama, right? But 
that is a measurable statistic when you go into Big 12 play. So we'll see between you know now and Friday and Saturday how they can clean those things up. But as we talked about, Tommy, in your question, the offensive line did look a little bit out of sorts in the first half. And they definitely – that's the reason why a guy like DJ Campbell is in the starting lineup, right? A big 6'3", 340-pound road grader at right guard. He's got to be able to you know kind of perform better. And then the offensive line as a whole. It's not just one guy when you talk about offensive line play. But, yeah, that's absolutely something that has to pick up. Uh, for them to really have success again, not just in Alabama, but Big 12 play as well. Kind of to continue building off of that when it comes to some stuff to that needs to be improved upon in practice, something that Texas has struggled with dating back to last season, third down conversions and the deep ball. Texas 6 of 15 on third down today, one of three on fourth down, like we mentioned earlier, and then couldn't complete a pass from 25 yards plus through the air. Steve Sarkeesian did touch on that in his press conference, saying that we're getting closer. It's going to feel good when we do hit them, and it sounds like he's going to keep dialing those plays up now let's go ahead and transition into some of the depth guys that stood out in his presser steve sarkeesian said that he played 10 true freshmen a lot of rotation going on early and often throughout this game uh eric i've got two guys queued up who are your two guys uh, that stood out to you for depth wise who maybe weren't listed as starters but came in and played valuable snaps well i'm sure i'm gonna take one of your guys so you you did me the favor of letting me bad lead off so i'm sure you're gonna talk about manny muhammad he, in my mind, had an excellent showing, get a, a lot of playing time. It's funny, you know, some of the other writers kind of said to ourselves that Malik Muhammad's a guy who I think in his freshman year, he, he might get burned a time or two, right? Or he might, you know, get make a mistake as far as reading. A, I shouldn't say burn, but make a mistake in terms of reading what he sees. But for as many times as he makes that mistake, we genuinely see a player who's he's going to get an offensive time or two, right? And that could result in some turnovers that are being forced. So Malik Muhammad, in terms of a freshman, that's one guy who caught my attention. I'll, I'll give you another guy as well, who I think, you know, really kind of held his own in, in terms of someone who might have been unexpected. That's Gunnar Hell. You know, he really, it, it, while the interior of the offensive line may have struggled a little bit as far as the, the run game, I thought Helm, for when he was out there, you know, really did his job well as being that second tight end, that blocking tight end, even caught a pass. We saw a little bit of that improved athleticism that was talked about in the off season in the early part of the fall camp by Steve Sarkeesian and position coach Jeff Bank. So, he really caught my attention as well, because I think in, in going back to the, the versatility that was talked about, I counted just in the first half alone. And this is just by my eye. I'm sure there were more uh, that could be spotted. Six different personnel groupings. You know, we saw a heavy set uh, where they brought in extra offensive linemen as a tight end. We saw, you know, the uh, the touchdown um, screen to Jonathan Brooks that came out of a, a 20 package, right? Two backs, uh, no tight ends. Of course, we saw your traditional 11 personnel. We saw the 12 personnel with Gunnar Helm. Uh, so I just saw the, the variety of ways I think this team uh, can do some things. Once they do get clicking offensively, it, it, it really has the potential, Tommy, to be scary because, again, just the fact that they can you know put a JT Sanders in the slot, they can use Gunnar Helm as that inline tight end, they can you know put X in the slot, Xavier Worthy in the slot, they can you know beside Jordan Winnington on the outside, just a myriad of things and a myriad of ways they can use as players, kind of positionless football almost. The, the possibilities are endless. It's just a matter of kind of getting, you know, that timing, getting what you need to down. So we'll hope again that they can get that fixed between now and next week. Yeah, two good picks there, Eric. And you did steal my defensive pick uh, when it comes to death guys stood out and Malik Muhammad, the highly touted prospect of the South Oak Cliff in his first ever collegiate game, five tackles, one pass breakup, was second on the team in tackles behind David Benda, who had six. And then offensively, how about Jaden Blue, a guy who maybe we we weren't going to see too much of until the late goings until today. He comes in after Cedric Baxter goes out with an injury, and Steve Sarkeesian mentioned in, in the postgame press conference that he took a shot to the ribs, hopes that Baxter can be with them traveling to Alabama. Didn't seem He didn't make it out to be terribly serious. Uh, but Jaden Blue, 55 yards on 10 carries, led the team on the ground rushing. So really good showing there uh, for Jaden Blue, who's patiently waited his turn in this running back room, and there's been a lot of talent out in front of him. Last segment for us here, Eric, on our inaugural uh, instant reaction show. Players of the game on offense and defense. I'll once again let you lead off here with this one. Player of the game offensively, I have to give it to Xavier Worthy. I mean, in my mind, Tommy, especially when the offense was trying to find their rhythm. You just saw a player who, quite frankly, you know, you can say 95% of FBS teams just don't have in terms of his big play potential. I want to say in the first half, I should have jotted that number down. He had something like six grabs for 70-something yards. That, that ability to kind of, you know, that home run threat, that keeps the guys in the offense going, keeps them energized. You know, hey, if we just hit one deep ball to X or one, you know, 
it, it can really kind of jumpstart the offense. And I thought, quite frankly, you know, again, we saw his yards after catch capability, something that Steve Sarkeesian said he wanted to get uh, back in Xavier Worthy's game after him having to be the focus of the offense as far as the deep ball. It was nice to see that on opening weekend. Uh, defensively, you got to give it to Jalen Ford. Uh, how about that one-handed pick, Tommy, right? A guy who we know, talked about the Texas defense and, and, and their struggle to force turnovers. For Jalen to be able to read the coverage and he gave a really great breakdown in the post game in terms of, you know, kind of that's a play that they practice for that, you know, sometimes film is kind of hard to come by, but that's a play that they felt they'd seen on film. And once he saw it coming, his eyes kind of lit up and he knew where to be. And then from there, it just was a matter of making the catch. And he kind of joked about the fact between he and David Benda, they go out there and practice those one handed grabs. So he feels he's got one up on him now as opposed to not having as many on him during fall camp. But Jalen is just a guy who, again, when you have that preseason defensive player of the year, someone who really fires up the defense, you know that's a guy who it, it's just a matter of time where he can find his way to the football. And we saw that today. Red picks. You took my offensive player of the game, Xavier Worthy, capping off the day with seven receptions for 90 yards. Certainly, once again, looked like Quinn Ewers' favorite target. Went to him a lot in the first half. Felt like Texas was kind of lacking spreading the ball out a little bit in the first half. That obviously very quickly changed in the second. Uh, defensively, I'm going to go with co-players of the games here. I'm going to Vondre Sweat and Ethan Burke. Really, you could give this to the entire defensive line unit for Texas. They were on it all day today, brought their A game and played phenomenally well. Steve Sarkeesian made sure to compliment them in the post-game press conference. But Devondre Sweat, five tackles, half a tackle for loss, and two quarterback hurries. And Ethan Burke as well. How about him in his first start over at that buck position? Four tackles and a sack and a half as well. So the defensive line firing on all cylinders for Texas today. As we mentioned, they pick up that 37-10 to victory in the season opener against Rice. Eric, final thoughts as Texas – Heads on the road to Alabama for a much tougher matchup in week two. Final thoughts, Tommy. Well, there's, again, Rice, that's an opponent that I'm sure some fans out there would be disappointed by the score line. And, you know, again, uh, offensively, if they'd gotten going a little bit quicker, I think that score line might have been different. But now you got to transition to Alabama. So I'm going to harp on the things that I talked about in the open. Power running. Can you win in short yardage situations? Again, Tommy, there's something about, in my mind, a mentality. While, yes, Steve Sarkeesian talks about the fact he wants to win different ways and do a variety of things, third and two, fourth and two. In my mind, those are running downs, especially when you got a DJ Campbell and you got a big offensive line. You got to impose yourself. Can they, be, can they do that? Because you know there's going to be a time. You might only have two of those situations all game, Tommy, but you know – those are huge momentum shifts, right? For Think about it. When, when Rice was able to stop Jonathan Brooks on fourth down, they all came off, you know, fired up, right? That's a momentum shift. While, while they were never really in the game, it provides hope. Now, that's going to be the case against Alabama. They are going to be in the game in those times. So can they convert in those situations? And then the deep ball. When you've got an A.D. Mitchell, you have X, you have Xavier Worthy, you have J.T. Sanders. All the talk has been about getting the deep ball going. And, yes, to their credit, Steve Sarkeesian actually mentioned this in the last press availability that he had that I'm going to make the motion he did since we're on camera, that not everything has to be up the field. You can kind of get some guys going like this, hit them in a, in a crossing pattern, and they can take the ball the rest of the way. And yes, we saw an Xavier Worthy do that. We saw JT Sanders score on the, uh, it goes down as a 40 something yard TD pass, but we know that was JT taking it most of the way. But you got to be able to make the defense defend the first level, the second level, and the third level. And right now, offensively, if, if you're a defense facing the Texas offense, you don't fear them as far as that deep ball going over your head. you got to be able to get that going in my mind. So uh, going doing it against Alabama is going to be a tough task, but we'll see if they can jumpstart that this week. Yeah, you couldn't have said it any better myself. I think the biggest thing, 100%. Offensive line just just has to improve. Better in run blocking, better in pass protection. That's going to be crucial if Texas wants to beat this Alabama team here in Week 2. Thanks for joining us here on the Horns 24-7 YouTube channel for our Week 1 instant reaction. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel and also turn on notifications so you're the first to know when new content drops throughout the season. For Eric Henry, I'm Tommy Yarsh. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.